Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and I'm here with a brand new mod, the Hover Engines. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen them. Well, they're finally done, and they're out there on the workshop for you. Now, currently, at the time of recording this video, they don't have build states yet, but I am working on those, so I'll have build states in. Currently, when you first start building, you're going to see a nasty big square. In fact, I can demonstrate to you that right here by grinding this down. Yeah. You get a nasty square. I still need to do a little bit of tweaking so you might see the components reorganized on the right there. But nonetheless, you will find yourself... Eh, actually, no, it's about right. But nonetheless, these are the thrusters themselves. I say thrusters even though they're called hover engines because that's technically what they're thought as of. But you won't have to worry about them burning things. What's their power, you might be asking? Well, they're about a little over two-thirds of the power of a standard large atmospheric thruster. But, of course, they're only counting as a 3x3 three three block. And you see down there at the number 9 hot slot, you can actually select them, and when you go to place them, the rotation point is around their little single block rotation area, so you can actually manage to place them pretty accurately. Unfortunately, there's no way to have the collision and placement volume only be like a 1x1 one one block there, and then have basically the collision volume prevent you from placing it. So, you unfortunately can't build right up next to it, like I can't put a block on top of that one I just placed. That's unfortunate. Maybe in the future, the devs will find a way to allow such things. But currently, just remember, you're going to have to have a 3x3x3 three by three by three area clear to place one of these in. The way they function, as I said, is like a thruster. You'll notice that when you place them, they have these arrows on them that dictate what direction the thrust will be coming out. That's basically what direction they're going to be pushing in, like this drone right here. And we can actually go ahead and select the controls of this drone. And select the remote control system on it and take control and I can demonstrate this thing moving right away and you see there it's hovering just as you would expect with a hover engine and I do of course have four of these now their power usage even though their power output is lower than a and by the way it drops I think because it has a rotor on the bottom of it so it can't really counter it exactly correctly but the output of these thrusters as I said is lower than a standard atmospheric thruster, but their intake of power is actually higher. This is to sort of counteract the fact that you're going to be able to use these, basically you can put them inside your ship if you really want to, and they are about 25% efficient in space, which means they're not going to be as fast moving as they are in space as they are down here, but they will actually work in space. Probably not enough so you can just use these and fly straight into space, but enough so that if you do happen to have a ship built using these in space, it'll actually function. You might be asking, okay, so you got all those facing downwards, how's this thing moving about? Well, there's something that people pretty much on Twitter right away ask, hey, why are they not at a 45 degree angle? Why are they at a 30 degree angle? Like this one here, you can see it's not a 45 degree angle slant, it's a 30 degree. Well, that's because if you rotate them like this, of course the thrust will be now be going that way, so you get these thrusters set in a different direction. These are all, of course, just the same one, just rotated around in a different manner. So you can see here, you see the arrows on that. If we decide we want the thruster facing downwards, we've rotated it around, and now we can put this down, and it would make us descend quicker if we were to fire that thruster. Again, this thing is dropping strangely just because we have a stupid rotor on it, and they're not countering for that exactly correctly. What else do we got? I think that's the basic gist of it. These do have LODs, so they start out with, I don't know, around 2,000 something polygons each, and then they drop down to around 500 or so once you get far enough away. Luckily, I think I did the LODs pretty well, so you don't really see them popping in and out too badly, even though they are, you know, changing out models, at least in theory they should be. What else do we got to show? Uh, coloring, you can indeed color them. Uh, let's go ahead and move this so they're actually in sunlight a little tiny bit. And you can see the when you color them, there's actually some fading to the metal as if maybe some of it's been worn away from use. And not really any nicks or scratches, but a lot of chips into that. You can also see there are a bunch of screw holes that I've stuck into the normal app to uh, well, give it some character. And the metal itself, and a lot of it, is actually very shiny. The grid itself, the glowing part, which actually if we were at night, you'd see these blue sections do still glow. That'll actually remain glowing, of course, at any time. I couldn't find a way to make it so they'd light up when they're in use, so the actual glow is always there. It's rather unfortunate. I like it so that if there's no power, it goes completely black. If it's minimal power to full thrust, they gets brighter and brighter, but I don't know of any way to set that up at the moment. If we were to look in very closely, though, you can see, and actually, we'll go in the spectator mode here. Forgive us for being under the ground and fly up to it. You actually see we have a few, well, a fair amount of detail here where it drops down. You get the main output here and then a little cut in here or if the camera clips and you can actually see it's got an indentation to it. I'm very happy with the overall design to it. And being this close, you can see we actually do have a fairly high poly count because there's a fair amount of detail stuck into it. And again, of course, our 
arrows here. On the back of it, we have more detail and more little warning things to indi indicate that, hey, this is a fairly hefty machine, you gotta be cautious. And of course, the moving arms, which unfortunately don't currently move. It would be nice if you could set them up to actually move in some way. You can see their idea they'd be slightly pistons-like, and then they'd have their rotation sections here. But no such luck on that. At the moment, they're just static. And of course, as I said, you have your connection point right there and on the bottom. Nowhere else on this can you place a block, which I that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> as I said, though, it would be nice if I knew of some way that you could... I, don't, I believe there is actually physically no way, but hopefully the devs will integrate a way where you'll actually be able to set it so you can build right up next to that placement block, but just not inside maybe the collision volume of the actual thing. Because it does have a proper collision volume if you use Alt-Shift-F12. Uh, for some reason it's not showing up on that one, but you can see up here they do have a relatively tight collision volume around them. Also, of course, you can color them other colors than just red, and you see the textures will have the same similar scuffing on them, but they will, of course, have the same fades. But, of course, the different colors if you decide to even color it a silly yellowish green. And this is actually a white, so if you wanted one that looks pretty clean, you'll even get that. Overall, I'm very, very happy with this. It might seem a bit over shiny at points, but honestly, I'm fine with the metal being almost too clean in points and then a bit scuffed to others. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm not going to be editing the texture too much more, I don't think. I think I'm pretty much done with that. Just going to be building those build states that I mentioned are currently lacking. And I'll get those into the game probably within this week, hopefully. Uh, you can see over here, there's that roving fortress I made ages ago with the accidental boat. This is one of the ideas I actually had in mind when I built the thing, is the idea that I could eventually take out the wheels. Now, I'm probably going to have this small version here, which I say is small, you know, it's obviously a fairly decent size, but I might have a version that's about twice the size of it, where this locking point here, instead of it connecting with one block, it'll connect to four, that's how much bigger it'll be. And uh, we'll see how that works out, you might see that within the next week or two, maybe even within this week, not sure. By the way though, let's just once again demonstrate that you can control a ship like this. And I'm going forward now. I like these an awful lot. I'm very happy with them. I love how their texture turned out. I do wish I could have a lightning effect on them. I did spend about a whole day passing about and trying to figure out a way to stick a lightning effect on them, but no dice there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, about the only thing I could figure out was like an old-fashioned modding technique where I can make a lightning effect and have it sort of appear, but it would only be on my side. You know, you'd have to manually install a mod for it like the old days. I couldn't find a way to get a custom flame effect. It just you can only generally change the colors of the flame. So I've hidden all the flame effects and stuff. I could have them there, but when I experimented around with it, I didn't like the way it looked. So I preferred to go with this. So here's this thing, the hovering fortress buzzing about. And of course, most of these thrusters are, I keep calling thrusters, these hover engines are, if you look at the arrows, aligned to face down with some of them facing off to the side as well to give you enough push to keep yourself hovering. Alrighty, let's fly back. I got two more little machines to show you just so you get some basic glimpses of how you could set these things up. And wowzers, that was a bit quicker than expected. <laughs> uh, here was the scout drone I think we started at. Pretty nifty thing. Uh, what else? We got this little tiny ridiculous thing here with a fair few thrusters for sideways movement, actually. As well as up and down. Well, mainly just up. Down is just all gravity driven with most of these vehicles. And actually, we, those two thrusters at the back... They're both set up to just be a well, forward thrust right there, and then we got two at the front for bragging. I'm very happy with this, how these things turned out. Again, though, I do wish we could stick them closer together, because it would be nice to, instead of having to have this block right here, just have this one aligned back one. Maybe this is my indirect way of asking the devs to find a way to make that system work, where instead of just entering, how big is this block, and entering 3x3x3, three by three by three, you'd enter 1x1x1, one by one by one, and then set an offset number, and then set a one by three by one or something and set an offset for number for that and basically be the offset would be a grid pattern away from origin where the origin point of the block is and then you'd have actual offset like we do now i don't know something like that would be ideal by the way we have another little ship here we got six thrusters keeping us up or hover engines keeping us up we got two on the back here to propel us forward and we got actually these here are actually to propel us to the side so we actually have two thrusters in each direction for movement left right forward back and then we actually have, I think it was two, yeah, that will actually aim down so the ship can descend faster than it would otherwise. And then, of course, six to hold us up. And I really like these because it starts to give you that almost, you know, like something from the Matrix, which is obviously where these things were originally inspired from or by. I can't seem to zoom in and out, by the way. I don't know what's happened here, but um, there we go. It seems to have locked my view for a second. 
And these work pretty well. I, I like them. I, I'm in love with them. I'm probably going to be using these in a lot of my stuff. You might be wondering why I hadn't put out so many ships. It's also because I really just... I wanted hover engines instead of just prop things. Prop things are cool. These sort of prop jet engines, but I like these. You might be asking how you build these. The components list is as follows. And let's just stop this ship and hop out really quickly. Get out our little welder. And there we go. We got steel plates. You're going to need 10 steel plates to just start with. We got two superconductors, which means you're going to need gold, which can be a little bit difficult to find. I think you need gold for those. Six construction components, two large steel tubes. Because I figured you know, you're know you using the large steel tube and stretching them out to make some of these tubular circular designs on this. You got your construction components. I added quite a few of those because it's an advanced high technology thing. Thruster components, since it does work out of atmosphere, I figured those would make sense. And then I got 32 steel plates stuck in there as well because I believe the last amount of steel plates you add basically adds health to it, so these should be relatively sturdy. Um, also, I do have a gravity generator component there because they are, well, they're just denying gravity, basically. They're hover engines, um, which that for sure does require gold, so you're going to have to be doing some looking for that if you find yourself on a planet, because I have had a, well, I've had pretty poor luck finding gold so far on these Earth worlds. So, anyway, not exactly a starter engine. You're going to have to work a little bit for it, but I love them. I love the way they turned out, and um, yeah, I'll try to keep updating them with a larger version, and then eventually, if I can wrap my head around how I make a version for a large ship while still having some interesting connection things without just having this scaled up to some stupid proportion, then I'll figure that out. Alrighty guys and gals, that is that. I hope you like this thing. It'll be in the Steam Workshop right away. It should be there right now at the time this video has gone live. And it'll of course look for other videos on this. As I update it, I might do other videos. I'll probably just put one out. I probably won't put a video out there for the build states, as really the build states is something I should hopefully have done within the next day or two. Hopefully. Because that's, you know, let's be honest, a black box ain't really acceptable. I should have proper build states in there. Alrighty, guys. Ta-ta. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.